All right, so uh, this is my clamp dock, and uh, I think it's come out really well, so I'm going to probably put a little bit more time and energy into it, make more accessories for it. If you haven't seen it already, it's basically an adjustable clamp. So hopefully you can see when I squeeze these two sides here, I can move it up and down. When I let go, little uh, prongs on the two sides stick into grooves on there and lock it in place. It's actually kind of ratcheting because you can push it up. I'm, try I'm trying to break the habit of doing it, but you can push it up without squeezing these because they're tapered. The tops are uh, chamfered. But I find that that does wear the teeth a little, so I'm trying to break myself of the habit of doing that. So it's better if you squeeze the sides and move it up and down to the lace. And then basically move it to the height as tight as you can get it to a table surface. And then once you're there, you pull the lever right here down. And that flexes up these two compliant components in the, in the moving platform and compresses the space in between there. Once that's folded down, you can't squeeze this in, so it's effectively locked in place. And obviously to the limit of the strength of the plastic. I made this in PLA, I quite like it in PLA. I think PETG would work quite well as well. Basically any material will be fine. With the caveat of these black little uh, insets that I've made. Uh, so once it's disassembled, this gray part is this part and these are the compliant pieces that flex up and as you all know pla isn't great for springs because it will just stay wherever you flex it to but that's okay in this case because when the cams that are on this lever this lever here spin around and push that up it, it compresses. When you let go, it may stay there, but when you slide it up to a table, it'll flatten it back out because it doesn't really care where it is. So it compresses each time without worrying about the memory uh, limitation of PLA. And the gripper that I made for this component is raised and with a gap in it, printed in TPU 95A. Uh, and the idea is that the notches in the sides of the main component or every three millimeters. This is designed when the lever swung to push this up three millimeters. And this rubber gripper should be compressible to about three millimeters as well. So in theory, you can get to pretty much any thickness that you want or need to, to clamp this to a surface. There may be some exceptions and I uh, invite people to let me know if you run into that, measure it, and let me know what it is, because there's a quick solution, and that is to make a different design for this little inset. So we don't have to redesign the whole thing. We can make a, a rubber gripper that's got more compression to it. But so far, I've tried it on a lot of surfaces, and uh, it's worked quite well. And it's also quite interesting because if you clamp to something that's just right, it's sort of in one of those transitioning ranges for this, and so it's not a really, really tight clamp, if you leave it for a bit, this TPU seems to grip more over time. So if you leave it there and come back a day later, it's actually got a pretty good grip on the surface where it felt like it might have been loose initially. The TPU grippers, the two that go here are designed to compress. And then there's another two in the top component that are designed not to compress, but rather just to grip. So they're really flat with a wave action on it but it's got a little wave, which I've used on a few other designs and it seems to work quite well. And I'm reasonably happy with this. These might be a tad too thin. Uh, so again, if people run into trouble with them, we can print or design a bigger one and print it a little thicker so you get a little bit more traction. Uh, and of course it's gonna vary depending on if you're gripping to glass or gripping to a polished wood or a metal surface, they're all gonna be slightly different. But once you put all that together, the levers in, so once you've put the lever in, I'll do that quickly in a minute, uh, then these go together. You can slide it to whatever height you want and then slide in an optional accessory. So in this case, it's kind of like a multi-remote holder. And there's a tab here that pulls that tooth uh, away, the, the teeth on the back here, away from the the um, notches in the back side of this. And so you can take them off and on. 
slide on something different and then you can just push it down but then to release it pull it forward and clamp that onto any surface i don't really have any great surfaces here to clamp to that you'll be able to see so i'm i'll spare you that but um basically you can you can see once you get your surface in there swing this lever down that pushes up the two um, compliant sections there with the grippers on them and it just squishes the surface that you're on so it, it works quite well uh, despite being printed in PLA once you add the accessory it strengthens up this sort of spine part so it gets really stiff I'm anticipating that we may do modifications to, th to this over time but for now for a first release I think it's it's performing really well and so my focus for the next little while will be making some other options for it. I, I've already started some fold-out designs, so I'll start doing some of that stuff to go with it. The interface on the back for the accessory, this core part here that allows it to engage with this can be printed inverted or upright. If you're printing it inverted, you can print it without support. But when you're printing it upright, there's a little piece of support that sits in here, which I've popped out already, that... Uh, helps to get the edges of these teeth nice and clean because there's a flat on, on the bottom side of it. And what I have noticed is if you get some burrs on those, that can impede its ability to lock into place. So if you're finding that your accessory is moving around and not locking into place, take a, a look at these little teeth right here and just clean them up. Make sure there's no burrs or loose plastic on there. And then try it again and you'll probably find it works quite well. And just quickly show you how it goes together. This main piece has already got one of the grippers in it, but the other one just goes in. They kind of get the length in first, one side, and then the other side. I use this little flat tool I have to push it in, but you can use anything. Flex that piece in, and once it kind of finds its space, you're good. The same thing on the top part, this same gripper, or it's not the same, but the same idea. Just put, press it in one end and then lengthwise and then you can flex in the other side and the first time i did it was a bit of a struggle but once you've done it a few times you'll see it goes in pretty easy and it stays in that's the most important thing so once you've got the grippers in uh this lever has a couple of little lines on the top meant to indicate sort of a grip point and that goes to the top so it's in this orientation so if you flip it over and just get one of these end nubs into one of the holes, then flex the side just slightly so it'll drop into place. And now that's in and can go rotate. And that's pretty much it because that just slides up into the core part here. Squeeze the side, slide it up, squeeze again to relocate it and you're, you're in place. And then snap on the option or accessory of your, of your choice and um, you know put it to use. If you have any ideas for other accessories, I'm keen to hear them. We'll try and make a bunch. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, super keen to hear if people are having success with it or not, if it's uh, working for you. Let me know what you think.